pace. You know, it really does because um, evolution is such a, a, a is such a, a main ingredient of German bass, which is what keeps it fresh, which is what keeps it interesting. People that are into our music and you know, buy our music, you know, whatever they whatever they're doing around our music, they kind of feel the the vibe of us as people. Because when we're making the music, that's our soul coming out of us. You know, and it's, it's kind of jumping out onto vinyl, so you can listen to what's inside of R2 hits. It's the first British music since punk, which is, has got an identity, really. I mean, if you ask anyone about drum and bass, they immediately say England or London or Bristol or wherever. So it's, it's the first music since punk to have a real to have his home in the UK, which is something that we're proud to be involved in, really. So it's good as a movement that we can all look back in 30 years, whatever, and say we started something. In one hand, it's brilliant because you can go and do it in your bedroom, and you know the real dons will come through with their own sounds, and therefore they will be at the forefront of it. But the scene does need the four heroes to come along and to take the level to that higher point. And it's the same with Groove Rider, and with Goldie, and with Ronnie Size, and with DJ Crust and Dylan J. Vaughan. So they're we're waiting for the next man to kind of go one step further and that's the great thing about that scene. You've got people like, uh, as you said, you've got called Digital Ed Rush and all those people that are, uh, and, and Dillinger, that are real uh, base uh, scientists, you could call them, that are pushing the boundary forwards when it comes to mutating base sounds. This is the finish, one of the finished breaks that I've, that I've been working on. He's out there on his own, man. He's got his own sounds, constant inspiration. And the thing, he never likes any of his tunes. You ask anybody and they're like, I can't understand it because he never likes any of his records. I find when I do a track, maybe I, I, I don't put all, I don't, I don't never put all my all into a track. I've, I've never, I, think, I don't think I've ever done that yet. I want to do a track, I might get like the breaks done and certain parts of the track that I really like done. And then, I just fill up the rest of the track with sounds that are similar to what I want. You can hear a Dillinger tune within the first four bars, you're like, that's Carl. You just know. It's with the bass. I mean, it's these beats. It, it, before his bass even drops, you, 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 you know it's Carl. <laughs> in there right now is just a just a kick just a Right. You've got Carl, you know what I mean, he's, he's, he's looking at some really fat tunes and things that he's doing with bass lines, you understand, you know, he's coming with just like totally unique styles, and, you know, he's trying, you know, I can't hear him, you know what I mean, copying anyone at all, you know, it's no, it's no, it's like he's in his own, he's doing his own thing, you know, and it's like he's creating his own sound and he's going his own direction. There's different techniques of distorting your bass, you can do it live, you can... That's just a that's just a basic flat kick, and then like you can. There's loads of ways of doing it. You can just put another, you can double it up and sort another extra bass line track on it. You get a lot of hiss, and that hiss, but yeah. it keeps it, it keeps it raw. Totally. When it comes in, it's like a, an atmosphere to it. You can, there's just different ways you can do it. That's how, that's the way I'm doing it today. Wow. There's loads of ways you can you can get that distorted sort of feel. The first time I met Delinja, he started talking to me about um, hertz and frequencies, and I was like, oh, man, this guy, this guy knows his bass. You know, he, he's into it for like sure, sure. Carl, Carl's the worst one. He's he's got tannoys, but his tannoys go lower than my ones. And, uh, Several, <laughs> several council levels. My biggest influence is Dillinger, really. Dillinger's, Dillinger's a very powerful artist, very quiet, but very powerful artist. I mean, he's, he's whole, he's a bit of a demon, man, in music. I mean, he's, Carl really could take any, any dance floor apart and, and has done for many, many years because Carl's that kind of guy. And the breaks are all together at the moment, but. The 
frequencies that he gets, the, the way his tunes sound totally apart from everybody else's because of the, the way he sets up the bass frequencies. He's got a total understanding of what he wants to hear, you know? That's just me barking. <laughs> Human bark. Sometimes I get sample CDs, now and then, now and then, but if I can do it myself, I'll just get the mic out, I'll just make a noise with my mouth, I'll twist it up in the sample or whatever, and it just sounds like an effect. I need to get sessioners in to play what I want them to play, because sometimes you, you can't always find a sample in a certain key. I mean, you can stretch and at the end of the day, you're losing quality. You can never find exactly yeah. what you want. Whereas now I'm working on my album, I'm actually getting people in and telling them what I want to play, and just locking it all in tight. Resampling it, different drops. Just different percussion sounds. A little something. I want everybody to make rec good records so I could have more records to play. For you heads, we're abstracting it. Abstract it from the metal, hardcore design, roving instrumental. We abstract it from the metal. It's literally like like surfing, like hopping on a wave, it just takes you away. And you, you, it's almost like you get into a state where you can't do any wrong. Whether you feel happy, sad, or you feel aggressive, or you feel whatever, is the, the communication of feeling in music. So therefore, we don't have to necessarily lay down, you know, verses and choruses of repeatedly saying the same thing. We can sort of make the listener use their imagination more. The irrelevant of what, what bracket you may put it in, if it's good, it will affect people in one way or another. It will touch them. Before, how it used to happen was, uh, you used to have the top guys, as I said, like, uh, yeah, like uh, Goldie and uh, uh, Four Hero and Fotek and all those kind of people. They was putting out tunes that would make a lot of people in the, in the scene think, how do they do that? And then and they'd, go in their, they'd go in their bedroom or in their studio and try the most techniques and new things will be discovered. You create so much different sounds, so much different bass lines, you do things with breaks, you know, you, and when you put them together, you create, you do create a, a total new sound. It's all about vibes, really. So I work a lot with Ed Rice and Fierce and we have a little kind of group of people we work with. You know, and I think for us it's just about the vibes and the tunes always, man. This is where we do virus. All of the virus stuff gets done here. And is this where you've been doing the album in Rush? Yeah, yeah. We've been kind of doing it. We haven't been telling anyone we're doing it. We've just been doing it the last six months as we go along. Today's the last sort of day we have to get a track sort of, or maybe two tracks. No, we've got, we've got to beat <laughs> So yeah, today's the final day we have to get any sort of, any new material done for the album. It's been like six months in the making, huh? Uh, Ish. Like that. Maybe even a little bit more. But we sort of made it without even realising, you know, we just, just came in this room once a week and, and sort of made a track a week and now we've got a, a build up of material so <clears throat> it makes sense really to put it all out at once. This is what I call the heart of the studio, the uh, sampler, the e sampler. <laughs> Brings 
everything. That's that's the texture man. He knows, you know, he knows about layering the tunes and getting maybe deep, more of a deep texture out of it, more of a, a, a wider soundscape, if you like. Um, Matt also knows about all the techniques, and if I say, you know that sound, say sound A, for example, mm. I feel it should be a bit more whatever, if I use a word to describe it. Matt knows what I'm talking about, and within two presses of a button and a little processing, it's there. This is so nice. It's got to be some nasty. That's like our standard bass sound. Though. Very often a tune might be in a certain way, up until the last hour yeah, and, just all and in the last hour it's like wait a minute that beeline's all right but to be honest with you i know between us we can do something a lot better than that and and the other one's like yeah i know i've been feeling the same thing as well so very often it's even you know in even in the last half an hour of making the tune that can shape the whole thing you know i'm school I was into the way these ones experiment because he'd always be, I mean, Alpticle's one of the I mean, true engineers of music, generally. General music has been involved in a lot of different things. And he's got that he focused on drum and bass as his forte. I know that Matt Optical is like pretty much inundated with remixes and he's got his own album projects. Him and Everest have got a virus project coming out. And all the 12s he does, I mean, that guy is 24 7 in the studio. <laughs> so you can get vibrato and strings and that. He's always looking to just push it forward and just move it into the next dimension, put it for another little effects unit and put it back into the sampler and twist it up again. We make all our scary strings on this thing, really. I don't like to sample other people, so... This is a whole album here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, we should be coming back in a minute. There you go. As, as time goes on and we're making the track, it kind of shapes then. It's a sort of, uh, a, a sort of piece it together as we go along job, really. So this should be the track, hopefully. <laughs> It's all about a let off, you know. I mean, people, I think people's true character comes out in the music when you hear something like somebody could be quiet, but like not outgoing and loud spoken and that, but in their music they express themselves properly. the artist to be able to make a record tomorrow or tonight, play it out on Slate tomorrow and have it on the streets a week later, that's really important. Do it on a Friday, play it on a Saturday and you, you know, you, 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 see, you can gauge the reaction. That's, yeah. that's what uh, Shadowboxing was. Shadowboxing was, was, was a, a night in the studio, a rough mixed down track and it, and it um, came together. You make the tune and you cut it on dub and you go out that weekend and you just get instant response. The Metalheads is the most respected uh, drum and bass uh, label by far. I think it's definitely the one that pushes back, you know, the premises and breaks new ground all the time. Distortion doesn't really matter with drum and bass, so it's just got to be loud. It's like if it distorts a bit, and that doesn't matter too much as long as it cuts through and makes people's ears bleed. <laughs> case of listening to the track making it sound you know sorting out what what eq you need i.e uh, does it need more bass more top do you need to bring the snare out do you need to make it sound grungy or whatever um get all your levels set you know just you're happy with it then once you've got all that together you're gonna cut it in there um and that's just how to drum and bass is cut one track at a time straight onto straight onto the level you know, they'll push all the machinery to, to make it distort and to make it sound this grungy sound. And um, so I suppose that is using it in the wrong way because it's like digital and it's supposed